Welcome back to Pipes Etc. Episode number 12. I'm glad you could stop by. In this episode, I'll be conducting my fifth challenge. It will be between two Virginia Perique Black Cavendish blends. So grab your favorite beverage, light up a bowl, and sit back and relax for a while. If you watched episode number 10 about my blend categories, then you may be familiar with how I break out the blends into separate categories. Instead of just Virginia Preak, I go a bit further and have Virginia Preak with Black Cavendish or Burley or Kentucky as well. And the reason I do this is because I believe each tobacco adds its own unique characteristic to each blend. Simple as that. So this challenge will be between my go-to blend for this category, Kamoys of London Cast Number no. 7 Single Coin Slice, and the challenger, Rattray's Marlin Flake. I feel these are two very strong contenders. So let's see how they do head to head. To get started, I will read each company's description for their blend. And let's start with the blend that already tops my list, for this category, Kamois Cask Number no. 7. And this is how Kamois describes their blend. A broad coin cut flake, Kamois Cask Number no. 7 wraps a mix of Virginias and pure Perique around a dark center of smooth black Cavendish, topped with a slight aromatic. That may be a surprise to some of you, it was to me. Kamois Cask Number no. 7 comes in this 3.5 ounce container that looks like a little sample paint can and it can be purchased in bulk as well these are both very nice options the description says it is top slight aromatic but i can't detect it perhaps it is so close to the flavors of the black cavendish that i can't separate it out let's move on to tin note yeah the first thing I usually pick up are the Perique's influence, raisins, and then, yeah, that slight citrusy notes from the Virginias. If I dig a bit deeper, I pick up more of the Virginias that are the sweet and a bit earthy. Very nice. The Black Cavendish just doesn't jump out with anything that I would expect, like, a, you know, a vanilla note. All right, let's move on to the Challenger, and here's how Rattrays describes their blend. Marlin Flake combines dark Virginias, black Cavendish, as well as a pinch of Perique. A short, sweet, and to-the-point description. I appreciate that, but there is also a second note. A companion to Old Gallery. A shade darker, different aroma, but otherwise a tobacco in the same tradition. Marlin Flake is available in 50 and as shown here, 100 gram tins, as well as in 500 gram bulk. It's very nice to have these options for both these blends. All right, we'll check out the tin note. Let's open this up and see what we have. Of course, I've already opened this. Hmm. Smell the tanginess of the Virginias, then a faint sourness, almost a fermented aroma. Now the dark fruit, like figs, hmm, and a caramel, almost like a molasses undertone. Quite savory. Nice. Well, let's uh, let's actually take a look. They are mm, kind of long strands, but the pieces come apart pretty nice. Hmm. They look dark brown, almost black with some blonde specks in them. Tad moist, but it shouldn't take long to dry them out, I, I don't think. Should get a good smoke and not too long. Hmm. So now it's time to move on to the tasting. And so for the next few days to a week, I will smoke both the blends side by side. And then in the next segment, I'll share with you my thoughts and give you the ratings. Hmm. 
Well, all right. Now that I've completed the tasting, it's time to share my opinion and give you the ratings. But first, I would like to offer you my beverage pairing. For these Virginia Perique Black Cavendish blends, I found that the best pairing for me is a dark rum. So the one I chose is Ron Methuselah, 18 year old Grand Reserve. Let me read you the distiller's description. Ron Methuselah 18 year old Grand Reserve rum is a Cuban style rum from the Dominican Republic. It is made from Caribbean molasses, which is harvested and distilled before being Solera aged for an average of 18 years. Solera aging is a process that has generally been reserved for aging cognacs, ports, and sherries. I won't bore you with the details, but I will say it involves filling a series of casks at different levels over a long period of time. They kind of cascade into each other. In this case, they've been aged for about 18 years. Nose, initially the aroma brings a nice mix of caramel and vanilla. A touch of earthiness plus the influence from the oak barrels, you know, that um, typical spiciness like cinnamon and cloves. Yeah, swirling it a bit brings out the notes of toffee and a faint hint of smokiness. Wow, it doesn't take much time for this rum to reveal its flavor. The taste starts out with a smooth caramel with some light layers of uh, vanilla. Hmm. Then a somewhat peppery, somewhat pungent spiciness comes out, which brings me back to what I detected in the aroma, the cloves and, and cinnamon. Then there's a, a hint of a raw bitter, bitter sweetness like Steen's pure cane syrup. Also, a touch of sweet orange, um, like marmalade. It always has that little bit of earthiness to it that kind of reminds me of toasted walnuts. I definitely recommend drinking this neat. The body is it's rich with a full, nicely balanced flavor profile. The finish is medium long and leaves your mouth with a, yeah, I can feel a slight spicy tingling sensation, similar to Perique. Very nice. Okay, so let's move on to the first blend, my number one choice, Kamoi's Cask Number 7. In regards to taste, the Virginias have typically sweet, citrusy, and a grassy taste, but not at all robust. Tasty nonetheless. The Perique has the taste one would expect, light fig, raisin, and a bit of spice. The Black Cavendish also has a somewhat typical taste, somewhat vanilla-like, but subtle. If you don't rub out the inner portion of the coin where the Black Cavendish is, you will get the occasional hit of its sweetness. When you put it all together, you have a very smooth vapor with a bit of an earthy taste to it. It is all in a very nice balance. No one note overtakes another. If smoked at a moderate to slow rate, it burned cool and even with no harshness or bite. I tend to rub it out completely, which can be a bit of a chore because of the black Cavendish center. The center is more solid and needs more attention so that it will mix evenly when packed. My impression, this is a blend just on the mild side of medium. It has a nice, distinct flavor, and for those that want a more citrusy, grassy smoke, it delivers that, though not overwhelmingly so. This type of preparation is nothing new, as there are many similar blends available. So, one has to ask themselves, is this just another Escudo clone, like Luxury Bullseye Flake, Deluxe Navy Flake, or Davidoff's Flake Medallions? Perhaps as none of them really stands out more than the other. Some may find that they taste more Perique or the Virginias have a different flavor. To me, subtle nuances. But do they make that big of an impression? Well, not to me. 
I smoked all the others. And when you come down to it, I feel they are rather similar. They are all rather good. And Kamoy's cask number seven is quite good. So I had no problem picking this one over those mentioned. It is a fine example of an enjoyable, balanced smoke. Plus, at about 12 bucks for a three and a half ounce tin, it's not a bad deal at all, especially when you consider bulk. Now we have come to the challenger, Rattray's Marlin Flake. And here are my observations. In regards to taste, Marlin Flake is not as rich as one might at first expect. The dark color and rich aroma can lead you to think it will be, and though it does get richer and sweeter and a tad smokier as you progress, after about a quarter of the bowl, the spiciness becomes a bit more apparent too. The overriding characteristic is the classic Virginia tanginess that is balanced with its sweet, not so grassy, but slightly earthy taste. Adding to the experience is the equally balanced dark fruit and mild but noticeable molasses maybe brown sugar type of taste and smoking it i rubbed it out completely so not to get too hot in doing so it burned fairly slow and stayed cool unless i got too aggressive in my cadence when i smoked it at a fast cadence it also lost some of its character and became rather one-dimensional though I really had to puff away at it pretty hard to get to that point. At a normal cadence, it was very nice. Burned evenly, but with a few more relights than usual. My impression of Marlin Flake, it's a medium bodied, medium strength blend that has a very satisfying flavor. To me, the flavor profiles of these two blends are not apples and oranges, but they do have distinct differences. One must decide for themselves which style they find most satisfying. And now for the ratings. After close consideration of all the details, here is how I rate these blends. On the Pipes Etc. rating scale, I give Kamoy's cask number no. 7 a rating of respectable plus. On the Pipes Etc. rating scale, I give Rattray's Marlin Flake a rating of Distinguished Plus. Yes, Distinguished Plus. And let me explain. I have no issues at all with Kamoy's. Never have and probably never will. The same goes for the others I mentioned that are, I feel are quite similar. I will probably keep the Kamoys in my tobacco cabinet for times when I want that particular experience. You know, the more citrusy, grassy flavor profile. It's nice to have choices. But after trying the Marlin Flake, my level of expectations has gone up considerably. The richness and aroma and that wonderful taste made the difference. I truly enjoyed this smoking experience. At first, I was torn between these two. In fact, I smoked these two blends more during this challenge than I have smoked two blends during any of the other challenges. I was almost at the point of how do I justify breaking the Virginia Perique Black Cavendish category into two subsets? Then I came to my senses. I decided against it and would pursue the best blend based on its own merit. One of the deciding factors was the dark rum. It goes well, very well with both, but especially the Marlin Flake. When I was stuck, I tried a number of beers and cocktails with both, both of them to help decide. But it was the Marlin Flake and the dark rum that finally grabbed my attention. It brought out that deep, satisfying, molasses-like taste, but it really brought out the character of both these blends. I would suggest drinking this neat, but a very nice cocktail that goes well with both of them is called a rum old fashioned. And I'll leave the recipe in the bucket below so you can give it a try, but please enjoy responsibly. 
I've been working quite a bit on the state of the industry video and I found that there is a good deal of information to share. But it's taken me longer to compile and edit this information, so while it will probably not be the next video or two or even three that I release. Also, when it is released, it will probably be a series of two, maybe three videos. Folks, there is a lot going on here. In the meantime, look for my sixth challenge. And since we're in the summer months, so as one might expect, I've been concentrating on the Virginia blends more. That will continue, but let's try something a bit different. The next challenge will be between GLP's Laurel Heights and Low Country Black. Two Virginia Latakia blends. Something to satisfy those Latakia cravings in these dog days of summer. This should be a really interesting challenge. Well, that's all for this 12th episode of Pipes Etc. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to receive notifications when my next video has posted, click the little bell. Also, for those of you interested in hearing a different twist on topics related to outdoor experiences, including survival and preparedness, please watch for my Backroads Journal series here on the Pipes at Zero channel. I recently updated the intro and will have journal entry number one posted next week. And finally, if you have the opportunity, please join in and add to the conversation by adding your comments below. I really appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by Pipes Etc. And I hope you will again. And until then, good day.